In this video, we'll go over how to do vendor returns in IM3. So let's click on IM3, Procurement, and Vendor Returns. And if you click, it'll once you do that, it'll show you all vendor returns that are currently open or currently available. Uh, you can click on the magnifying glass and filter out for any that you have, or you can use the advanced search filter to find out um, ones that you've already started. But in this instance, we don't have any. So let's create a new vendor return. So we'll click that button here. And the vendor return number, we will let the system auto-generate that. In the vendor field, we're going to put in the vendor. Let's say it's going to be carrier. Uh, and it automatically put in the vendor name for us. And then if we have a reference number, maybe like a PO number, we can indicate that. The return date, status, uh, the type, and then the RMA number. As we need, and we click save. We will need to use a code, by the way. Click save, and at this point, we are able to add item details. To add item details, we click on plus, and we can either search by purchase order, and this will show you all the purchase orders uh, that have been generated for this particular vendor uh, that have parts sitting in quarantine, um, and also if we click on this. We can see all the parts that are sitting in quarantine. There's one important key feature to vendor returns. The part must be sitting in quarantine location for it to uh, show up on the customer return part search. So let's click search and we check the box. We click add and at this point we see there's no PO number attached to this. The part number, we see the part description, the unit of measure, the RMA number which got pulled from the header. Uh, the order quantity, receive quantity, and now we want to indicate a cost that we are getting back. Maybe it's $10 or $50, and the quantity that we're returning back to the vendor is one. And the it's the reason is because it's damaged. Uh, damaged. And then if, it's, if you're taxable, there's that discounts, if there's discounts, and your total dollars come up here, you can apply restocking fees if that's necessary, handling, miscellaneous charges, discounts, or shipping as needed. Uh, and you can add notes or attachments as, as you see fit. Um, at this point, we'll click Save. And right now, this vendor return is in draft status. Let's change that to Open. and Click Save. And now it gives us an option to uh, return this to the vendor. So if we check this button here, it says PO uh, item PO item returned successfully. We click on the generate invoice button to generate our vendor return invoice, and it gives us the invoice number, that the inventory or the invoice type, and it gives us all this extra information about the vendor return number, the PO number, the RMA number and it gives us the part number and the total return dollars, right? Uh, we can print this or we can send this off to the vendor and we can approve this and push it over to QuickBooks as we need. Um, and just to show that this part actually left our system, uh, we had one of these sitting in quarantine and now we have zero parts in our inventory. Okay, and that's how you do a vendor return. Uh, to find this vendor return, by the way, if you, for some reason, or to find this return invoice um, after the fact that you've created it, we can go to IM3, Invoice, and Return Invoice. And under this, we can search for customer returns or vendor returns. And to search for vendor returns, we click Search. And we see the only one that we have available there. And that's how you do a vendor return and find your vendor return invoice after the fact. And that's it.